So in this video, we're going to discuss different levels of ecological study. We're interested in these vocabulary terms, organism, population, community, ecosystem, and biosphere. We're going to see that there are other levels too. Um, when we get to more micro units, like the cells unit, we'll eventually discuss structures within organisms. Um, but here in ecology, we're kind of interested in the big picture. We're going to see that this video is going to be very important because we're going to frame the rest of our unit around these different levels of study. So we want you to be very clear about what each term encompasses or sort of uh, what makes each level larger than the one before it. What makes population larger in its um, study than just studying an organism? What makes studying a community a little bit broader than studying a population? So see if you can really um, keep track of wh what each level is and what it studies. So let's just do the very simple example first of studying an organism. Most students are familiar with what an organism is, just any one living individual. So say a squirrel or a tree or a fungus or even an organism, a microorganism, a smaller organism that maybe we can't see with our own eyes, but maybe with the aid of a microscope we could see, oh, that's a bacterium right there. So um, any one living individual. So what makes a population a little bit broader is that we'd be studying all of the organisms of that type, or I wrote here of that species, in a particular area. So uh, we actually need to be very clear about what a biological species is, and we'll actually try and, and be clear about that a little bit later in the course. Um, for right now, you can most students have at least a very broad concept that a species is like a particular type of organism. So um, all of the squirrels in an area, all of the gray squirrels in an area might be one population of squirrels, um, and that would be different from the population of oak trees that that would, that would be in the same area. So just broadly think about it as like one group, one type um, of organisms, and if we think about all of the organisms in that area, then that would be a population. I do like to emphasize in that area because sometimes populations might be a little bit different in different areas. Maybe gray squirrels are a little bit different in one area than they are in another area of the country, for example. And so that's what makes uh, populations um, a little bit different when we really think about them in a particular area. Okay, so let's um, expand and, and, and talk about how the community concept is even larger in scope than the population concept. And that's because we're now really thinking about all of the living species together in a particular area. Because oftentimes different groups interact with each other. Um, interactions could be beneficial interactions. Uh, maybe squirrels are helping to spread the offspring seeds of oak trees when they eat acorns. Uh, we'll also see that there are some fungi who often work with uh, plants at their roots to kind of help plants, and then the plants feed those fungi. Um, but there might also be kind of um, uh, competitive interactions as well. So maybe that could include bacteria that make squirrels sick in order to um, uh, benefit themselves. And so if we study all of the, think about all those interactions between the different species, we'd be thinking about the different, um, we'd be thinking about the community level. Um, another word for living is biotic. So if we're thinking about all the biotic factors or biotic interactions, bio means life. So we're thinking about living interactions in the community level. How does the ecosystem level make even study more broad? It would be to consider non-living abiotic factors that also have an impact on living species. Um, a or an is often the root word for not. So abiotic, not living. So what might that be? Um, easy examples for land ecosystems, kind of classic factors that are important for living species would be rainfall and sunlight or temperature um, would all be abiotic factors that might affect whether or not a species can live in a certain area, um, in, in a certain community with other living organisms. Um, so if the rainfall isn't adequate, then maybe certain plant species can't grow there. And so that might affect what animal species you find there because they want to eat that particular plant species. Um, so that would be the ecosystem level consideration. And finally, the biosphere level would just kind of encompass all um, ecosystems considered together. Um, so now we're thinking about all areas because maybe there are issues that kind of affect many ecosystems at once. 
And so um, one example of that might be a volcanic eruption. Uh, maybe um, you, you could easily imagine that a volcanic eruption would affect the direct area around the volcano, but maybe it also releases a lot of chemicals into the atmosphere that have impacts on ecosystems thousands of miles away. And so that would be kind of like a biosphere level issue that ecologists might study. So in summary, we want you to be very clear about these different vocabulary terms, and it might be most helpful to think about them as a group and to think about what makes each level broader than the previous level.